I'm sitting here in my living room. The power is off. It's two something in the afternoon. Well, I was looking for my phone to see what time it is, and the phone's sitting right there. It's 2.26 in the afternoon. I just got back from the mall where I walked down to get some ice cream and maybe pick up a couple things for the store. And I got to thinking on the way back, I said, God, it's hot. Half the mall, uh, even though their generator was running, half the mall was in the dark. The ice cream stores were in the dark. The ice cream stores couldn't serve ice cream, so I had to go without ice cream. So I made it back to my apartment. I've got a sweaty t-shirt on. My hair is half damp. I don't have no makeup on. You're getting the real Don Shader here. You know, because I got to sitting here thinking, since I can't do anything, I have a fan running over here that's plugged into the circuitry that the refrigerator is plugged into that's being powered by our little piece of shit, chicken shit generator that we have in this building, this little four cylinder diesel piece of garbage that goes. <laughs> But at least it's keeping the, that circuit alive and the elevator alive. I didn't have to walk up the stairs. And I got a fan blowing on me. So at least there's some relief, okay? It's not all that bad. I want to tell you a story. Don't get started on it as soon as I come back. Hey! Hello there. So one of the, you know, a lot of people have asked me how I like the United States. How was my trip to the United States? I've gone for two and a half months. I, uh, I never really told the whole story about why I was going there. I went there originally just to go take a little three week vacation. That was my plan, take a three week vacation and go visit some of my neighbors before they die because they're all my neighbors are all elderly people and the, near the end of their life. I got one that's 99 years old. One of my favorites is 87 years old. Hi, Carmen. And and I love you, Carmen. I miss you. And a couple other neighbors that actually ended up in, you know, assisted living that I didn't expect. But anyway, so, you know, but it turns out that I ended up staying there longer because of the state of emergency, okay? And so I thought, well, I'm going to go there Here's my, here's my expectations. I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna buy me a motorcycle. I'm gonna find me a motorcycle on Craigslist, I'm gonna get me a helmet, a jacket, and some gloves, and I'm just gonna go riding like I used to do when I lived there. I've rode motorcycles since I was 16 years old. I went for a period of about 30 years where I didn't have one, and then I resumed riding back in 2003. Then I've had, I don't know, 10 or 15 different motorcycles since then. So I said, I'm gonna buy me a bike, or maybe another Honda Goldwing that's got some miles on it I can pick up for four or $5,000 or seven or eight, whatever, you know. Go ride and get it out of my system and then, and then put it up for sale when I'm ready to come back and get some friends of mine to sell it for me on Craigslist and hopefully get my money back. So I, turned, so I bought this motorcycle. There was an ad on Craigslist and it's the first time I looked at one of these bikes. It was a Yamaha FJR 1300. It's a four-cylinder, little powerhouse of a bike. It's 154 horsepower. It had a tuned exhaust system on it, modified exhaust system on it. Probably gave it another 10% horsepower. This thing was, was a screamer. I mean, it's for a sport touring bike. I think they use this bike for some, in some areas, they use it for a police motorcycle. But anyway, I bought this, but the thing is, I kept it for 29 days and then I sold it. I think I probably put maybe 150 miles on this bike the whole time I was there. I never once got to go and have my dream rides that I thought I was going to do. So, you know, you're asking, well, why did you buy it, Don? Well, you know, it's just like, why did I sell my condo? Why did I, why, so many of the decisions that I've made over the last few years, I just cannot explain. Maybe if there's a higher power, he or she has something to do with that. I don't know. But 
On this motorcycle, I went and looked at this bike. The guy that was selling it was terminally ill. He had some kind of cancer and he was, they've done everything they could do for him and now he's just basically getting rid of his stuff and liquidating and giving money to his family and stuff. And I guess he's just waiting for time to go to hospice, you know, but I kind of had a soft spot for the guy. And the thing is, is when I showed up to look at this bike, I sat on it and something just didn't feel quite right about it. And the, the problem is that when I sat on it, put my feet on the pegs, which my feet were up under me, and I felt like I was about an inch too far away from the handlebars. So it felt like I had to lean forward a little bit. And I thought, this, I don't know if this is going to be comfortable or not, because I'm used to a, a prone seating position with my legs out in front of me, my feet out in front of me, and I could lean back against my backrest and I could still hang on the handlebars. My gold wings, I could just let go and just cruise down the highway. And all I had to do is just lean to switch lanes or make corrections, you know, and it was fun. Of course, I tried not, not, didn't want a cop to see me doing that. I know it's not smart and not really a safe way to ride, but that's what I did anyway. But I, I, I felt, I think I finally kind of felt sorry for this guy because I can't, I went and looked at it on a Friday and I gave him a hundred dollars to hold it until Monday. And I thought I'll give myself time to think about it because I had this, this uneasy feeling about the comfort of this bike. So I show up on Monday, I get up Monday morning and I just say, okay, F it. I'm going to go and get the bike. I'm, I want to help this guy out. I think I more I had more reason when I look at the reasoning for buying this motorcycle I honestly believe that there was more reason to help him out and make his end of life smoother if that's at all possible and I'll work this other stuff out I'll figure out a way so I ended up and I bought the bike and then the first couple of days I rode it, I was fine, it was okay, but then when I took a little trip out on the road, on the highway, I didn't make it 30 miles and I had to stop and stretch my legs, pull my pants out of my crotch because they were like all bunched up, you know, and it had this tiny little seat on it, it was like a little seat like this and my butt was felt like it was like this. It feels like I have a fat butt. I mean, I look at my, I can remember 10 years ago, I'd hold up my underwear and it'd be like that wide. Nowadays, it's like that, you know. At least that's what it feels like. But, you know, it just, the, the bottom line is that the bike just wasn't really a good fit for me. So I ended up, I just tootled around town a couple of times, went to lunch with it, and then I just said, well, to hell with it, you know. It's, Got a few more weeks to go and I'm going back to Ecuador and I might as well go ahead and see, put it on Craigslist and see if I can get some bites on it. Well, hell, the very next day it would took off down the road with a new owner on it. 40 year old woman showed up and bought it and paid me cash and gave me my money back. I bought, four, I, I paid 4,500 for it. I listed it for 49.95. She offered me four. I said, I can't do that. I can meet you in the middle and get 4,500 and that's what she did. She gave me 4500 for it. The only thing I lost was the, I, I, well, I bought some insurance, but I got most of that back from Geico. Thank you, Geico. Even though I hate that little, I'd like to squish that little lizard. But anyway, I, I got that, most of that money back, and I, my, one of my Canadian neighbors took my jacket and helmet and stuff off my hands, and I came out good, I think. I enjoyed that motorcycle. It cost me probably 50 bucks. But, and so, but, you know, I got rid of it and maybe that's just the way that person up there is looking out for me. And I helped somebody, so then they helped me get rid of it. Night, that nightmare was over with, you know. So, that's really all I wanted to tell you about, you know. It's, yesterday I did a video with Stella and we talked, you know, about things that's going on here. And yesterday I felt pretty good. Stella always makes me feel good. Sometimes she makes me mad, but sometimes, most of the time, she makes me feel good. 
she, she only, the only reason why she makes me mad is because she just brings out my faults and, and she points out, makes me realize how stupid I am sometimes, you know. But I get over it pretty quick. She's pretty hard to be mad at. I can't, can't be mad at her very long. But anyway, I don't know how she's put it with me this long, but she's my, my best friend in the whole wide world. So anyway, but today I'm a little down and out because it's hot and the power is off. I see no end in this. I don't. I got neighbors that across the street. Two of the buildings across the street from me, their generators quit. They have no generators, so I I shouldn't complain because they don't have anything. And I got some one lady, a neighbor that's a little bit overweight, and I know that this is taking its toll on her. You know and uh, believe me, it, it won't be long. She'll that problem will go away because you, you you don't live here and be overweight. It just you know, well unless you're like me, but you know. But anyway, I'll be glad when this is this passes. I know it's going to pass. I'm trying my best to be as positive as possible about all this. But man, I tell you, sometimes it's pretty tough, folks. But you know, I've been here three years and we've had shit happen here assassinations, shootings right down the street. Now there's been three mayors assassinated in the last three years. And I'm worried about our president being safe and getting through this crisis. And I don't know that there's ever going to be an end to this war with the cartel. But anyway, trying to keep positive, I want to sp spread positive vibes to as many people as I can, uh, several of my friends have left, and I sit down at breakfast, and I don't have the same crowd with me that I used to have, so it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's kind of sad, to tell you the truth. But anyway, for those of you that are planning to come here, don't change your plans, just come on, all right? Come on, you make up your decision. You make your mind up and you make the decision. Don't listen to, to too many YouTubers, okay? I'm not going to tell you this. It's rainbows and unicorns. If you, want, if you want rainbows and unicorns, there's a couple that I know that used to produce videos on Ecuador. You can go listen to them. They can give you all kinds of uh, false positives. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. My opinion in $20 won't get you a cup of coffee. That's just how I feel about it. So anyway. Ciao, ciao. Magenta, 69, ready, hot. Catch the ball.